Hi, I'm Jodie from Stay At Home Mum and today I'm very lucky to interview Sharon Shelford who is a McGraw breast care nurse. Good morning Sharon, how are you? Good thanks Jodie, mm -hmm. how are you? <laughs> so Sharon, how did you become a McGraw nurse? McGraw? McGraw? McGraw. 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 Back in 2008 I actually did a course with the Cancer Council in Queensland and it was just on breast cancer nursing. And it was at that course that I actually heard that there were such things as breast care nurses. I actually didn't know and I'd worked in oncology um, for a lot of years before that. So then um, late in 2008 there was a project um, that we looked at getting happening here and I worked on that project um, just to see about the viability of a breast care nurse for this district and found that there was a real need for one. And then at that stage, um, McGrath put in an application to the federal government, Department of Health and Ageing, to see if we could get some funding from the federal government um, for um, breast care nurses. And we were lucky enough in Gympie to be allocated one of those positions. And I applied, and fortunately, I um, got the position. And so, yeah, I'm still currently funded by um, the Department of Health and Ageing. But you're the only one here? I'm the only breast care nurse in the Gympie Regional Council area. Gra really believes in putting breast care nurses in rural and regional communities around Australia so that all women have access to a breast care nurse. Mm -hmm. And we got the funding here. And so um, about 40 odd of us were funded by the Department of Health and Ageing. But all the rest of the breast care nurses in Australia now are actually privately funded through um, donations and charitable contributions and that sort of thing. There's now 104 McGraw breast care nurses in Australia and we've seen about 250 odd thousand women in that time since we've been going. So before me in 2009 there was the odd McGraw breast care nurse around but then after that we all started coming on board a lot more. Yep. So what sort of makes your job different? What I largely do is look after women and their families that are experiencing a diagnosis of breast cancer. Um, so I'm like their care coordinator, but I'm also there to provide them with information and education about their diagnosis and what treatment options are offered to them. Because when a lady's um, first diagnosed with breast cancer, she's got a lot of decisions to make so that she can make the right decision for her and her family and that's what I'm here to help talk them through and provide them with information about. I also do so physical needs. So if a lady's for instance had a mastectomy then I'll get her the temporary prosthesis to start with and then I'll get her a permanent prosthesis down the track. Ladies that are having chemotherapy for instance for breast cancer will typically lose their hair so I'll get them in touch with the wig library that we've got running in town. There's now. a wig library? There's a wig library and we've got that running with the cancer the Council Queensland. We've got it linked up that when we run Look Good Feel Better workshops, which are makeup workshops for ladies, at the end of that day we get the Cancer Council to come up and if ladies are interested then we go, take them through the wig library and they get to borrow a wig for the length of time that they their hair is a bit ordinary. That's really cool, didn't know. Yeah, well we only got the wig library starting last year yeah. and so the Cancer Council have absolutely come on board with that. But the prosthetics, do they? Yeah, the prosthetics are actually... Um, paid for by the government through Medicare, so they're allowed to have a new prosthetic every two years. Mm -hmm. Then they're about $400 wow. um, every two years. Um, and if a lady's wearing that all day, every day, then it just barely makes it to the two years when they need to get a new one. And then, of course, the cost of bras for ladies with mastectomies are quite expensive as well because that's a special sort of bra that they need to get as well. Depending on the sort of prosthetic that you get, they don't always fit into your normal bra. There are some prosthetics that will actually stick to your skin. Um, and then a normal bra is okay to wear, but most of the prosthetics that ladies like actually fit into a pocket in their bra. And unless you're handy with a needle and a thread, um, then you need to buy a bra that's got that pocket already sewn into it. And they get those from lingerie shops and, okay. and that sort of thing. So the other thing we do as breast care nurses is um, advocacy for patients. Sometimes it can be quite intimidating speaking to the medical team. I'm quite happy to do that. Um, so if a lady says, well, I really want to have whatever, then I'm happy to communicate that on her. So if you start sort of from the beginning, a lady comes in, they go to the doctors, they find out, what sort of is the process? Most of my ladies will actually come through Breast Screen Queensland, which is the free screening program. Yeah. What's the age for that? Um, yeah. Officially it's 50, but they'll actually take you from when you're 40. And that's a free service that's provided to all ladies. You just ring up and make that appointment for yourself. I get most of my referrals that way, as more and more women are aware of that program. And they're right from the beginning? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ideally, I like to be there right from the beginning. We work really closely together. So most of my ladies will come through breast screen when they've just been diagnosed, but I also get ladies through GPs that if they've detected them something themselves and they've gone to the GP to be tested, it will come through that way. I get a lot of self-referrals as well. So ladies that have heard about me, then they'll just ring up. So I absolutely take um, self-referrals. Yeah. Um, Do you have any men? I, I haven't had any men in, since I started in 2009, but we know that one in 100 men get um, breast cancer in Australia. Um, so I imagine sometime in my career it will happen. If, if a um, male did come along, is the process any different? Like, do you have a, a, a different sort of set of rules, or is it um, largely the same? No, the treatment is largely the same, but of course the, the psychological care of that male is a lot different because he's largely dealing with the stigma of having what people refer to as a women's disease. There's a lot of good resources that have been put out now um, by Cancer Australia and Breast Cancer Network Australia for men that are written specifically for men and they talk about the issues that men will experience if they've got breast cancer as well. So at McGraw we don't distinguish between men and women. Um, it's anyone experiencing a diagnosis of breast cancer and their families because part of what we really do is absolutely care for the family as well. Advocacy is the other thing that I do, but I also support the whole family unit as well. There's the younger generation of um, females with um, early onset breast cancer. Do you have many of them? Do you support them? And what happens with the thing of the cut off sort of 40? Like what's... So for women under 40 that aren't eligible to go to breast screen, they, they're really going to be breast aware. And that's important for all women regardless of our age. But, you know, at the McGrath Foundation, we really believe in educating young women about breast cancer. So they've got the Curve Learn program now. And they've designed a whole program that goes into schools to educate young women about becoming breast aware. We all, as breast care nurses, deliver that education. Or in Gympie, we've actually trained up the school-based health nurses to deliver that program within the high schools. Say that it doesn't matter on hereditary, but you know from the press that it just seems to run in families. What's your yeah. sort of take on that? Well, we know that only 1-2% to of breast cancers will actually have a genetic link. But as we stand at the moment, there's only a couple of breast cancer genes that we've discovered. I think personally that in, in the future we'll discover that there's a whole bunch of other genes that um, are related to having a genetic link. Um, so part of what I also do is if we identify that genetic run in families, we'll refer people off to the genetic counsellor for some testing as well. Involve just blood or...? Yeah, blood tests from the lady that's got cancer and then there's the other women in the family that want to be tested have to have compulsory genetic counselling before that happens because they've got to know what they're going to do with that information if it comes back positive or negative. Do they do, like just say, in here in Gympie, do you have counsellors at the hospital or is that...? No, the genetics um, Queensland has run out of Nambool. You put them in contact with that genetic counsellor down there and then they can actually do that consultation via video link at the hospital as well, which means the lady doesn't have to travel, the health professional doesn't have to travel. The, the facilities are that good now that it's like sitting straight opposite a desk from someone, so we zoom the camera right in so it's like we're sitting here having that conversation. So for rural women there's a lot of... Um Options. Yeah, we have a lot of medical consultants that come to Gympie now as well. So within the chemotherapy unit we've got at the hospital, we've now got the medical oncologists that's come, the palliative care physicians come, um, radiation oncology um, for ladies that are having radiotherapy. They're still based at Nambour at the Sunshine Coast, but they're investigating whether the viability of doing a clinic in Gympie so that they can come and see their consultants in Gympie rather than having to drive to Nambour. One of the girls in the office was asking about implants and what, the, what effect... Is there a higher chance that, or is it harder to de detect breast cancer and how do they go about treating? Yeah. You know? So um, there's not a higher incidence of getting breast cancer if you've got implants in and it's like all women, we have to be breast aware and know what's normal for us. A woman with um, breast implants will have to still check her breasts like the rest of us do to know what's normal for them and report early if, that, if they detect something that's not normal. In terms of treatment, it very much depends on where the cancer is in the breast, whether it's in front of the implant, behind the implant, about whether they'll have to lose that implant for the length of their treatment. The treatment these days is very individual, so there's not one stock standard treatment 
for everybody. It, it very much depends on what sort of breast cancer a lady with an implant will have, about whether she'll lose that implant or will have to replace it down the track again. With uh, breast cancer, what is the sort of mastectomy rate? Like, do a lot of women choose to have it? have their breasts removed, but like in the media and all that, yeah. people are just whipping them off. But yeah. They're not. It, it very much comes back down to an individual um, decision about what you want to do. Um, I'm happy to communicate a lady's decision with the surgical team as well. You know, there's a theory out there that if it's not completely broken, why take the whole thing off? So, you know, mastectomy versus something we call the lumpectomy and radiotherapy, which goes together, they give the same results in disease treatment. So those ladies might choose to have a mastectomy knowing that it decreases their chance of having to have radiotherapy down the track. So there's radio, radio, radio radiotherapy, therapy, yeah. chemotherapy, yeah. lumpectomy, mastectomy, what is there any other types of treatments? That... Typically when a lady is first diagnosed, her first port of call is the surgeon because we need to take that lump out or that tumour out so that we can send it away to the laboratory to be completely tested because out of those results will give us a complete picture of what sort of disease a lady's got and what sort of treatment is recommended for them. A full range of treatment will mean surgery, then it will mean chemotherapy, radiotherapy and then anti-hormone treatment. So a lady might have any or all of those things in between. Yes, so it's all very individual. It's very much individual and so there's a lot of things that come out of that testing that tell us what other treatment um, is recommended for that lady. So it's actually quite hard for those people I think in that seven days we were waiting for the results because no one can give them an indication whether they're likely to have chemotherapy. I'm really grateful for this position and it's probably, I've been nursing for 32 years and this is the best position that I've ever had. I don't say that easily but you know I worked in paediatrics and that was a lot of fun and then I worked in the oncology treatment floor for a lot of years as well and that was an amazing place to work. But working just individually with women and their, um, their families experiencing breast cancer now is really the most rewarding thing that I've ever done because those ladies inspire me every day to do better. And, and you've got, got to meet your idol. And I got to meet my idol, uh, Julia Godwin, um, who won MasterChef in 2009, is actually a friend of the McGrath Foundation so she works really um, closely with a lot of the corporate friends program as well. Mm. It's amazing. She's a lovely lady. She's really lovely. I was very lucky at our last McGrath's Kenners conference to meet her and um, have a cuddle and ask her some <laughs> questions. <laughs> How often do you have the conferences and what do you sort of talk about? Oh, we're so lucky as McGrath's Kenners is because we're completely funded to go to conferences. So we sent to a conference every year. Usually, like, do you get to have a bit of a junket? Or? Uh, Sydney or Melbourne. <laughs> or like next year's in Adelaide, which I'm very excited oh, about. Oh, <laughs> line that up with a holiday but McGrath is lovely in supporting us because they pay for our airfares, our accommodation, our conference registration, they get us there, we're so lucky where a lot of other breast cancer nurses have to self-fund to get those conferences but McGrath just put on a breast cancer uh, nurses conference back in June which was on secondary breast cancer and today is of course secondary breast cancer awareness day so we recognise this secondary. Like, so that's when the breast cancer has gone from being an early breast cancer, which is treatable, to it's spread to other parts of the body, which is not treatable but it's manageable. Okay. So it can it be can be these days like a chronic illness, but it, it's not completely curable. So those ladies will um, eventually succumb to their disease if something else doesn't get them first, unfortunately. So not a lot is said about um, secondary breast cancer. So Breast Cancer Network Australia has got an initiative to recognising the importance of recognising women with secondary breast cancer because treatment these days is so good that often these women are living with like a chronic disease um, and can be very well managed with a bit of treatment here and there along the way. You can always hear that breast cancer is like a dead sentence but you don't, you don't agree with that? No, 85% of breast cancers these days are completely treatable and comp completely curable and so 85% of women diagnosed will get on get better and get on with their lives, right. which is fantastic. And so fortunately, less and less women every day are succumbing to breast cancer, which is an amazing thing. And I largely think that's responsible to Breast Screen Queensland or Breast Screen Australia because they're detecting cancers now as small as six millimetres, which is tiny. You'll never detect that yourself. No. Um, but at Breast Screen, they'll pick that up and you'll be treated and you'll get on with your life as well. Yep. And anything you can say to women that won't go get tested, what can you do say to try and convince them? 
Well, you know what? A mammogram is not comfortable. I'm not going to say that it is comfortable. It was my present to myself on my 40th birthday. Um, I've just turned 50. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but it's, um, you know, I'm not for sure. But, you know, it is uncomfortable, but it's such a good program. So for, you know, five, ten minutes of discomfort once every couple of years, then it's absolutely well worth it because they pick up things these, these days that are so tiny, you'll never pick them up yourself. And sometimes if, if a cancer's big enough for you to pick up itself, it's pretty, pretty advanced. And so you've got a whole bunch of other scenarios that come in there as well if it's quite advanced when you're diagnosed. Whereas if you pick it up when it's six millimetres, then the treatment is really quite simple. It's a bit of surgery, often a bit of radiotherapy and some animal hormone tablets, and then just get on with your life. So if it's tiny and it's not spread anywhere, then it's not chemotherapy either. So go and get checked. It's free service, 13, 20, 50. You ring up, you book yourself in. You don't need a referral from your GP. Just go and do it. But also be breast aware as well. So at McGrath, the Curve Lube program says look and know what's normal for you. So look in the middle with your arms up and then your arms by your side and look at all areas of your breast so that you know what looks normal for you. Um, nerve your pair, so feel around your breast and feel for anything that's not normal as well. But remember that your breast tissue goes from up under your collarbone, down to underneath your bra and all up underneath your arm. That's all breast tissue, so that's what you need to be checking and learn, so again, learn what's normal for you. And if you detect anything that's not normal for you, then go and see your GP early and get it checked out because the earlier you get something detected, the easier it is to be treated. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you. Site and it's available on iPhone and on Android. And you download that onto your tablet or your phone and it teaches you how to become breast aware.